I'm going to um, essentially tell you a story today, but before I do that, I'm going to read a passage out of the book, which apparently most of you have probably already read this. This is from the first chapter. It's called Taking the Leap. I remember sitting somewhere near the last row of Wes Hutchinson's marketing class, wondering what the hell I was going to do. I just sleepwalked through a presentation from my version of an iPhone, a cell phone with three key features. One, it could access the World Wide Web for email, stock quotes, sports scores, etc. It looked and worked almost exactly like three other iPhones already on the market. And three, it was never ever going to be built by me or anyone else. It wasn't original, it wasn't exciting, but I knew I had enough to pass. So I was relaxed pitching the iPhone. Too relaxed. Sometime between Professor Hutchinson barking out next up John Lusk, in my last PowerPoint slide, my big problem crept back into my head and stayed there as I wrapped up and shuffled back to my seat. I was three months away from leaving Philadelphia with an MBA from the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business and, immediate danger, and in immediate danger of getting a job. So we, we sent this newsletter out to about 35 people. It was, it was an invite. and It primarily went to our friends from Wharton and our family. And it was, it, you know, I, I sent this out and I said, hey, listen, we're going to start writing this news, newsletter. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to highlight our trials and our tribulations, our failures and our successes. It's going to highlight our emotions, our ups and our downs. If you, if you, you know, want to keep up, if you want to be kept informed, just send me an email and let me know that you're in. And that was it. And of those 35 people, of course, you know, we sent it to the people who've been asking to be kept posted in our family. So everybody opted in, right? And then we started sending out this newsletter. And this was uh, in September of 1999 when we started sending out the, the Mouse Driver Insider newsletter. And it was really no longer than a page, um, maybe a page and a half every now and then. It went out every three weeks. And it was really kind of the first form of you know, blogging, in a sense. Um, if I look back on it, if we had a blogging platform, we would have been blogging about this. Um, but that newsletter started to grow pretty quickly. Um, within three months, we had over 500 subscribers. And again, you had, to, you had to send me an email that said, I'm in. So we weren't marketing the newsletter. It was just out there sort of growing organically. Yeah. And then the, uh, the newsletter became sort of a de facto advisory board for us. We would send out some of our issues. We would highlight some of the problems and the challenges we were having with Mouse Driver. And all of a sudden, people would respond. And I'm not talking about one or two people responding. We get 10, 15, 20 responses for a particular problem. I remember one, at one point in time, we had a hard time collecting from the May department stores. They owed us $100,000, and we weren't really sure what to do, and we really needed the money. And we, we talked about that in the, in the newsletter, and we had like 12 or 13 responses from people saying, you need to contact so-and-so because they're a collections agent dealing with the May department stores. They can get your money back. And they were right. So we would... We're connected to people that helped us get our money back. So it served as kind of a de facto advisory board. So in a sense, we, we crowdsourced our advisory board, and it worked, uh, it worked phenomenally well. But we, we, we continued to, to, to grow the business. And, and as the newsletter grew, the media kind of picked up on the story as well. And uh, you know, we, we, I think it was about, uh, I'd say September, it was around September of 2000 when our newsletter growth hit about 2,000 people. We had professors around the country asking us to come speak to their classes. And the media started picking, hold, uh, picking up with the story. And, and, it w and it wasn't the media coming to us and saying, wow, this is the best product ever, and you guys are just killing it. It was more about, wow, we've heard about your newsletter, and it seems to be motivating and inspiring entrepreneurs around the country. We'd love to talk to you about it. So the media started picking up on the story and about how the Mouse Driver Insider newsletter was really inspiring folks. And it was inspiring folks from universities to professors to VCs to entertainers to bankers, to other entrepreneurs, and that's what the media kind of picked up on. And in uh, February of 2001, uh, Inc. Magazine ended up doing a, uh, a cover story on, on Kyle and I called An American Startup. And uh, the, again, the, the story wasn't about how our product was just knocking it out of the park, um, although our product was growing in terms of sales. Uh, it, was about our, it was just about our, our newsletter and how we weren't afraid to kind of put things out there and to talk about how hard it was to be an entrepreneur and how our story resonated with about 98% of the, of the population of entrepreneurs out there because we didn't take on VC money. We pretty much funded it with our own money. We were starting it out of our apartment, um, and we were bringing an idea that we had for just a simple product to market. And that really resonated with most of the American entrepreneurs out there. So the media picked up on it, and as the, the media picked up on the story, naturally we started getting all this product awareness, right? And Mouse Driver became 
you know, I'm not going to say a household name by any stretch of the imagination, but people started to know about Mouse Driver. Uh, and they started to tie Mouse Driver to the story of John and Kyle, you know, and our, our emotional roller coaster of being entrepreneurs. You know, and as that story got out there, we got all this increased awareness. Um, we got increased product distribution. And our revenue started to cr slowly, uh, you know, slowly crawl up. Um, but, you know, the story got out there. Our newsletter completely took off. Um, you know, once the Inc. article came out, uh, we went from 5,000 to 7,500 to 10,000 subscribers in, in less than like six months. Um, and I call these folks raving fans because all they did was talk about Mouse Driver. And every time we put out a newsletter, we would just get these crazy responses. You know, we got so many responses that Kyle and I were trying to figure out what do we do with all these people? Because we the, uh, the biggest story out of all this is once, that, once the, the media kind of picked up on it, every major publishing house out there also picked up on the story. And so we were getting calls from like, you know, Time Warner and Harper Collins and Harvard Business Press and Perseus, you know, saying, hey, we want to pay you to write a book. And so Kyle and I sat down for about 30 seconds and said, do we want to do this? Yeah, let's do it because if we have a book out there, it's more awareness for the product and we'll sell, we'll sell more mouse drivers. So we sat down and we put together our book proposal and I flew out to New York and met with a bunch of publishers and sure enough, they said, hey, we want to pay you to write a book. I'm like, great, but I don't know how to write. And they're like, oh, yes, you do. We want you to write it just like you do the newsletters. You mean just like I talk? Yeah, all right, fine. So I sat down and... Um, I started spending about, I'd say, 50% of my time um, writing the book. And that was over about a six-month period. Thank you. And so the book came out in, um, I believe, January of 2002. It hit a number of bestseller lists. Um, you know, a number of different uni universities sort of picked it up as required reading right out of the gate. And Kyle and I, when we, when we sat down to write the book, we really wanted to write a book that we could have used. Uh, and we wanted a book that was real. You know, we, went, we didn't want a, a book of, you know, uh, Michael Dell talking about how he knew he was going to start a multi-billion dollar company at one point in time. And we didn't want to read another book about, you know, Bill Gates and how, you know, Microsoft was something that just, you know, kind of happened overnight. And, you know, we didn't want to write one of those books because we feel like a lot of those stories are complete anomalies. You know, I, I, and I hate to break it to you, and I think John probably mentioned it, the, the chances of any of you starting like the next Google or Facebook or Apple or Microsoft, um, probably pretty slim. Um, that stuff just doesn't happen. But we, we did want to write about the, the journey of entrepreneurship, you know, and the emotional highs and lows and the, the ultimate um, feeling that you get when you're an entrepreneur and you're doing your own thing. We wanted people to understand that. And we wanted people to understand that before they went and hit the entrepreneurial experience because we felt like we had a lot to tell. And we really wanted to encourage people to do what we'd done. You know, despite the fact that we had all these highs and lows, we felt like we had learned so much about ourselves. And we kept going back to Lynn Lodish's initial comments to us, which was, you're going to learn a lot more about your ser yourself, not only from a business perspective, but also from a personal perspective. And he was dead on. I mean, that, that, the, the four years that we spent with Mouse Driver, we learned, you know, everything we learned in business school and then some, especially around common sense and street smarts and how to read people. And these are just things that you don't get when you're at a corporation. And these are things that are going to help you in everyday life. When you're an entrepreneur, you're put in situations that test you, that you would never be tested in such a way. It's almost like doing an endurance race. Yes, How I do you react in certain stressful situations? And you just don't put yourself in those situations when you're kind of in a normal job most of the time. Um, and so we, we learn what to do in those different situations. And it was a phenomenal experience. And of course, the book did help us in increase sales. And that was, that was something that um, you know we, we certainly enjoyed, but again, we could have increased a lot more had we had the distribution, had I been actually focused on sales like I probably should have been instead of writing the book.